Welcome back everybody to the Cabal Wannabe Show. This week we'll be looking at a plethora of various magic items. Uh, I know I missed uh, at least almost two weeks of content, so we got a lot to go through. Some of the things I'm not going to go so in-depth about as I usually do, because I got some cool stuff at the end I want to show you guys. So be sure to tune in next week when I go more in-depth on things like Innistrad and uh, Dual Decks. So the most interesting part to come out of the Ajani vs. Nicol Bolas uh, dual decks here is the new artwork for Lightning Helix and Behemoth Sledge. Nicol Bolas got new artwork for Deep Analysis and some random trash card. But here's the full deck list for both decks. And I just want to say that the Ajani deck is playing way too life gain. -y. I mean, we got some good life gain effects here. But the Nicol Bolas deck, if it's any good, is going to tear this thing apart very quickly. This is pretty much a Highlander deck here, minus the mana base. And I'm really disappointed with uh, both decks. Again, Green-White gets some good uh, utility lands in the form of Vitsugatsi, the City Tree. Uh, both decks get Evolving Wilds to help with the mana base. But the new artwork for Lightning Helix and Behemoth Sledge, they only give you one of each. I mean, two Lightning Helix would have been a lot better, and one Behemoth Sledge, since they could just use the uh, and Warhammer. And people probably would have been just as happy. But I'm very disappointed in the Ajani deck. Lots of one ofs, not very good. I mean, you got Lux and Hierarch, but that's really not saying a lot. The deck also has uh, Searing Meditation to help with its, with its uh, life gaining plan. And Searing Meditation by itself is okay, but it would be a lot better if they would just give you a playset of it and let you use it more so because there's tons of little life gain effects in here. And it would be a lot better if they just gave you the right amount of Searing Meditation. Two would be so much better than one. Three would be probably the cutoff point. But I'm I'm kind of disappointed with the whole deck. I really am. Fireman Angel, another life gainer that's also a huge flyer. Good stuff, but I'm, I'm going to say it again. Disappointed in the Ajani deck. So the Nicol Bolas deck, the deck that everyone's going to want to know what's going on with it. Uh, like I said, Deep Analysis got new artwork. Counter Squall got new artwork. Although Counter Squall, you really can't tell what's going on too much. Uh, Crumbling Necropolis is your mana fixing with the uh, Terramorphic Expanse. Uh, Rapture Spire, which is trash. The fun card in here is Blazing Spectre. It's a good rare, but they could give you more. This is really a deck where you kind of sit back and very carefully play every card, because every time you lose a card, you're going to feel it. Whether it's on the battlefield or you're casting it, you're going to feel every card you lose. And good cards like Nightscape Familiar, they should have more of in here. Even more Toad to help out with the mana fixing. Uh, double Ignis Pouncer, however it's pronounced. Terrible card, but it's a mana fixer because it's got Swamp Cycling and Mountain Cycling. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you only get one of those. <laughs> Hellfire Mongrel, you get two of. I don't even understand why. Uh, Demir Cut Purse, a good uh, card to keep the field going. Just don't let it die. Agonizing Demise is good. Uh, Cruel Ultimatum, I don't, I don't care if it is Grixis colors. It should not be in here. One Deep Analysis, I mean, come on. A Grixis Charm, okay. Icy Minute Blair, you're definitely going to need that while you're playing. I mean, an Undermine, yeah. Under I mean, in my opinion, I know that they don't want to give alternate artwork to the rare cards. They want to give them the cards that people can more affordably get their hands on. But Undermine could definitely use the artwork instead of Counter Squall. Okay, that's just a, just my opinion, but I think it should have gotten it instead. Rare cards need alternate artwork too. Come on. Uh, Krill Ultimatum, I don't think should be in there. It's just way too high casting to be in there. It just is. Now, overall, I'm very disappointed with both the decks. I mean, if I can get them for cheap, I'll pick them up just so I can get the alternate art, Nicobolus and Ajani. But that's still a lot of money to shell out for way quakes to something I could build in my collection practically the way it is. So pick it up if you're interested in it. There's the whole deck list for uh, both decks for you. Uh, definitely good art on the deep analysis. I'll give them that. Um, the Lightning Helix is super awesome looking too. But I, I think I'm going to pass on this unless I can get on the cheap. Just my opinion, guys, but I guess that's why you're subscribed to me, so you can get my take on things, to get my opinion. Uh, dual decks, Venser versus Koth. Just going to say, baller imagery here for both the uh, Planeswalkers. I prefer the Koth because it's a little more action-packed. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of information on when this is going to be released. We know the Ajani versus Nicobolus is coming out first, and this one comes out like six months or eight months later. But they're letting us know about it now, so we can get all excited for it. Woohoo! Uh, honestly, I am not too excited. If this is the way dual decks are going, then I'm not even going to preview this because this is just ridiculous. 
First of all, you got two planeswalkers doing the same job, and now they're battling each other. Come on. What's up with that? But just so you know, Venture vs. Koth coming out relatively soon within the next year. Within the next year, uh, probably, I don't think it's longer than eight months, so I could be wrong, but I think it's relatively sooner than later. Let's jump to some relatively older news, but still new to me. Uh, the full deck list from, Photo Lo from the Vault Legends is available online, in case you did not know. Here are all the cards uh, for your viewing pleasure. Some of them did get alternate artwork, some of them did not. Uh, Crash, the Blood Braider, got new artwork. Uh, Progentus did. Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker, kind of excited to see him in there. Uh, the Lord of Wu and Lord of Wei are both same artwork, but they're portal cards, so you probably don't have them in foil. <laughs> uh, definitely worth checking out, right? Uh, Rafik of the Many got new artwork. Uh, the Star of the Dreadful got new artwork. Very surprising to see that. And uh, Sherma the Hedge Mage, whatever it is. I don't think that's new artwork. I'm pretty sure it is, though. I didn't keep up to date with Alara Block too much. But the photo list is there. The only card not pictured is uh, uh, Captain Sisse. But she did not get new artwork. But there's the full thing for you. I mean, we got Ulamog. We got the card from uh, Innistrad. Una, Queen of the Fae, Kiki Jiki, Omnath, Locus of Mana, the awesome tree folk guy, Doran. <laughs> Just really awesome things coming out. I'm not disappointed with it too much. I was really hoping for some more stellar cards. But still, it's still pretty awesome. I'll give them that. It's awesome. And then the real last bit of news I want to cover is Magic is being once again printed in Korean. Uh, very interesting because it's been a long time. It's been like since Tempest or Visions that was last printed in Korean. Uh, very glad to see that the money cards are still going to be worth money. These new Korean cards, if we ever stop printing it in Korean again, they will be worth just as much as the older cards. Probably, you know, minus dramatic price differences and cards that are out of print. <laughs> uh, very interesting to see it done again. I'm very happy to see it. Uh, my only complaint is getting them in America is going to be probably a real pain to get. They're probably going to be way too expensive for collectors or for general players. Collectors should have no problem getting their hands on it. But interesting and cool to see on a card nonetheless. I'm glad that's done. We're going to switch gears now to some uh, magic art stuff, which I love covering. And uh, that's going to do it for spoilers for this week. Uh, looking at Richard Kane Ferguson original Magic the Gathering paintings that he has for sale. And that picture there, I believe, is a picture of him. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's him. Uh, all the images I have here should still be for sale at the time of this uh, video making. Uh, this here is the original art for Pillage. I think it's asking for somewhere around 900 to 1300 for it. It's a really amazing piece. I'm very surprised he has it in his collection. I thought this would have been sold long ago. Um, I think this is the Ice Age artwork for it, but I'm not positive. But it's a ter terrific looking piece. Just awesome. I also forget the name of this one, but it's uh, very awesome looking. I thought this one was sold long ago as well, and he still has it. So, yeah, maybe you want to spend a grand or so and try and pick it up. Maybe. <laughs> I forget the name of this one, but it is also very awesome looking. It's kind of big looking, but the guy definitely has talent with the brush. Okay, definitely talent with the brush. This bad boy here, we all know this guy, but the name escapes me. Very awesome looking. I, I'm saying that about all the pictures I know, but it's very awesome looking. I love it. If I could afford to buy it, I would, but I can't. Richard King Ferguson, king of magic art, for sure. <laughs> Most definitely the king of art. So a link to the website uh, down below if you want to check out the artwork and how much they're worth. They're all worth uh, pretty much. One of these are actually under a thousand. But uh, I'll provide a link to you guys on the bottom there and a link to uh, some of the spoilers as well, I think. Or, not spoilers, but news. We just got our uh, first peek into the world of Innistrad, really. Uh, tons of flavor things they went over on the official website at uh, MagicTheGathering.com. And I'm just going to show you guys a couple of the images here because I want to wrap this up. It's already uh, 10 minutes almost and you guys usually don't like them too long here. Um, the artwork for it looks really amazing. We got like four different... They're not factions, I forget what they're called, or houses or something. But uh, it's a very flavorful world we got coming out. It's lots of, I'm, I don't want to say gothic architecture, but it's definitely got that feel of it. And Innistrad previews officially start next week on the official Mothership site. The pre-release is very quickly coming upon us. We usually don't get uh, previews this late in the season. I mean, I know it's 
the pre-release is still a while away, but we usually have at least 25 to almost 50% of the spoiler by this time, I think, and official previews are just going to start next week now. And it's like, well, we're a little anxious here, guys. Come on, let's get some information going. And we're keeping this one pretty close to the heart. Uh, let's actually look at a preview card I just found out a day or so ago. So our first um, preview card is Mayor of Avabruck. Uh, very interesting thing we got going on right here. The highlighted red parts are what's new to the card frame. We do have a night day uh, theme to the set here. Uh, different than what we saw in Shadowmoor and Lorwyn. Uh, let's talk about the basics first here. In the upper left hand corner next to the name we have um, the mayor, a visible sun, and on the Halpak Alpha, a crescent moon. Uh, bottom right next to the power and toughness of the mayor we have a 3-3 with the frame dented to the right. And on the Halpak Alpha we don't, but we have a new power and toughness and an inverted card frame. Notice how the green is slightly different and the letters are in white and in instead of black. And next to the creature type werewolf, next to the word creature, we also have another um, shape, which I'm assuming is a sun as well. Okay, there's not a lot going on with this. I have a uh, Spanish version of the mayor, but it's all very hypothetical on what people think it means because there's still quite a bit missing of text for the second part. But for the first part, it looks like all werewolves get plus one plus one and other werewolves once it's flipped or whenever the howl pack is up get plus two plus two. It's something kind of strange like that. But these are not, as far as I can tell, flip cards. The howl pack alpha looks like it's going to be an addition, additional card to the booster that you get the mayor of Avbruck in. Uh, either that or they just come in randomly and you got to hope to get the one you want. So it's very iffy on what the guy actually does. This is a rare, this is not a mythic, um, something they don't do too much of. It's usually a mythic for the, instead of a mythic, we usually do have a, a mythic instead of a rare. So kind of strange you did that. Um, I'm calling real on this because it's very professionally done. We have lots of things done to the frame by itself and it'll be a lot of effort for someone to put that much work into it just to be a fake. Not saying it's outside the realm of possibility, just saying I don't think it's a fake.